Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a four-year-old named Kylie and I also have a two-year-old named Mia. So one of the most ubiquitous language materials that you will find in a Montessori environment are language objects, which can be used for a variety of different purposes from helping a child to develop new vocabulary words, to honing their phonemic awareness skills, to the eventual development of reading and writing. So from one busy parent to another, today I would like to share with you five different ways that you can use language objects in your child's learning activities in your Montessori home. Dr. Montessori told us in her book, The Absorbent Mind, that the hands are the instruments of man's intelligence, meaning that our children use their hands to gain experience and that is how they learn. She's also known for saying that what the hand does, the mind remembers, meaning that concrete materials are really what helps our children to internalize their learning, more so than just seeing or hearing it. And that is why it is so critical for our children to have access to hands-on, tangible materials that they can manipulate themselves, especially when it comes to the development of language. So language objects are just one of the many different kinds of hands-on materials that we make available to our children in their environment as they're developing their expressive and receptive language skills. And the term language objects is really just a fancy way of saying something tangible that your child can actually hold in their own two hands that they can put a name to and that they can use as they're learning how to speak, read, and write. So knowing that, language objects can literally be anything from kitchen utensils to various office supplies, small vehicles, animal figurines, or even entire sets of language objects in miniature. But do keep in mind that it is very flexible and you can use any of the kinds of language objects with any of the activities. So use whatever you have on hand. This first activity is one of the most common ones that you'll find when you're looking for Montessori activities online. And while I would say that it's most appropriate for toddlers and young preschoolers, it can also be used with older children as well. And it's called object to picture matching. For this activity, you'll provide your child with a small basket containing about five to seven different language objects along with a set of matching matching cards. First, you'll invite your child to lay out all of the cards in front of them, either in a row or a column. It's really just up to your own personal preference. Once all the cards have been laid out, your child will remove one of the language objects at a time from the basket and compare it in turn to each of the cards until the match is identified. Once your child successfully finds the match, they can either lay the object on top of the card, which is what toddlers often like to do, or they can lay it next to the card. They will proceed in this manner until all of the objects from the basket have been matched up to all of their corresponding cards. Now for a young toddler who is first learning how to complete this activity, there are two things that you really wanna make sure of. The first is that you're only providing them with about five to seven objects in the basket along with the cards. Any more than that can be a little bit overwhelming. As they start to gain experience, or if you're introducing it to a slightly older child, then you can have slightly more objects in the basket, maybe about 10 to 15, but definitely start small. The other thing that you wanna make sure of is that the identical matching cards that are in the basket are literally identical in every possible way, right down to the actual size of the object, its shape and its color. So oftentimes for that reason, if you cannot find identical matching cards for whatever set of objects you have, it can often be helpful to just place the object on a blank background and take a photo of it yourself. And then you can print those out and laminate them if you so desire and then use them so they are literally identically matching to the actual objects that your child is using. And for a slightly older child or for one who's already had some experience with the activity, another variation that you can try is instead of providing them with a set of identical matching cards that look exactly like the actual objects, you provide them with a set of similar cards. So they're similar in the sense that maybe they are slightly bigger or smaller in size than the actual object, or maybe it's a slightly different color or kind of the object, or maybe it's a photo that is taken from a different angle or only contains part of the object instead of the entire thing. This is a really great way to engage a child who looks like they are needing just a little bit more challenge. The next activity is called I Spy. Now this is appropriate mostly for older toddlers, early preschoolers, children who are really beginning to develop their phonemic awareness skills, where they're able to start hearing the actual individual sounds that make up a word. For example, they can hear the sound k in cat, or they can actually hear all three sounds, k, at, in the word cat. So as they're developing these kinds of skills, they're going to have a lot more fun being able to use some of these language objects in more dynamic ways. 
for example, with the game of I Spy. So for this activity, you'll provide your child with a small basket containing about three to five different objects that have very different beginning sounds from one another. You'll lay each of the objects out in front of your child, and as you do, you'll take just a moment to say very clearly the name of each object so that your child is very clear what the name being used is. This is a banana. B banana. This is an apple. A apple. And this is a kiwi. K kiwi. You're really trying to enunciate that first sound so that your child can really hear it. Once all of the objects are laid in front of your child, you can then begin the game. I spy with my little eye something beginning with the sound a. Ah. Can you guess what it is? Apple. It is an apple. Apple begins with the sound a. Ah. I spy with my little eye something beginning with the sound k. Can you guess what it is? Tatatini. Yes, kiwi begins with the sound k, and I spy with my little eye something beginning with the sound b. b. b, -b banana. It is a banana. Banana, banana. begins with the sound b. Again, as your child gains experience with this activity, you can increase the number of objects available for them to choose from, but start small initially. As your child's phonemic awareness skills develop, and as they clearly become ready for more challenge, you can begin to use this game not only for the beginning sounds of words, but also for the middle and ending sounds of words, as well as for more complex word sounds like the digraphs sh and ch. The next activity is called object to letter sorting. And this activity is appropriate for a child who has developed a fair amount of phonemic awareness, but is now learning to associate what the sounds of the letters are with what their shape is, what they actually look like. For this activity, you'll provide your child with a basket containing two to three different sandpaper letters, as well as a small set of language objects whose beginning sounds correspond to those sandpaper letters. You'll begin by inviting your child to lay out each of the sandpaper letters in a row in front of them. Then your child will select one language object from the basket and identify the correct beginning sound and place it next to or on top of the corresponding sandpaper letter. And then your child will continue in this manner until they've correctly sorted all of the objects by their beginning sounds and match them to the corresponding alphabet letter. As with the other activities, remember to start small. For a child who is just learning, you may only want to start with two different sandpaper letters and just a very small handful of maybe four to six different objects. But again, as your child gains experience, you can begin adding on maybe three to five different letters and a larger quantity of language objects for them to match. The next activity is called Write the Word, and it's most appropriate for a child who has mastered at least 70% of their letter sounds and is beginning to work with the movable alphabet. For this activity, you'll provide your child with a small basket containing about six to eight different language objects and a movable alphabet. You'll begin the activity by inviting your child to lay out each of the language objects one at a time in two vertical columns. As your child is laying the objects down onto their workspace, you can clearly state the name of each object just to be sure that your child is familiar with them before they begin. Once all the objects have been laid out, your child can use the movable alphabet to sound out each word letter by letter and select the corresponding letters from the movable alphabet box and line them up next to the object. They will continue in this manner until they've spelled out the names of each of the objects on their workspace. Do keep in mind that in the Montessori approach to writing, especially in the early days, that children are encouraged to spell things phonetically as they hear them. So sometimes you might find your child spells a word that actually begins with C with the letter K or vice versa. Or they might place a letter that doesn't actually belong in the word there because that's how it sounds to them. And if you see this happening, don't worry about it. It's totally normal. It's okay for them to do this. As they become older and they gain more experience with writing and with spelling, this is something that will work itself out. The final activity is called object boxes. And this one is appropriate for a child who has had some experience working with the movable alphabet and they have had that aha moment that they can actually read something that they have seen written down and it gives them some more practice with learning how to read more words. So for this activity, you'll provide your child with a small basket containing about six to eight different language objects along with small word labels that correspond to each of the objects. Just as in the last activity, you'll begin by inviting your child to lay out each of the language objects on their workspace in front of them in two vertical columns. Then your child will select one of the word labels from the basket 
and slowly sound out the letters until they're able to read the word. Once they've successfully read the word, then they'll look for the corresponding object on their workspace in front of them and lay the object and the word label card together. And they will proceed in this manner until they have correctly matched all of the word labels in the basket to their corresponding objects. When first introducing this activity, it's a good idea to, as always, start small. So begin with objects whose words only contain three single letter sounds, which we sometimes call CVC words. This stands for consonant, vowel, consonant. So for example, d -a -g spells the word dog or p -i -g spells the word pig. These are simple and easy for your child to identify because each of the sounds in the word is only made up of one letter. As your child gains more experience, then you can begin to introduce objects that have more complex sounds in their names. For example, words that use blends like frog or consonant digraphs like fish. All right, friends, so those are five different ways to use language objects for your child's learning activities. If you have any other ideas of your own, please share those with us in the comments down below. If you are interested in learning more about doing Montessori at home or positive discipline parenting, I also offer a couple of e-courses that walk you through it step by step. So I'll be sure to leave a link to that in the description box down below, just in case you're interested in checking it out. And just in case you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with our children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.